Hello, everyone. I'm meteorologist Ted Keller. The talk for the last, well, week, really, and more has been the development and now the decay of once Hurricane Aaron, which was a Category 5 storm. Now it's called a post-tropical storm. So really, its name designation disappears at this point for the most part, but I put it up there for reference sake. And post-tropical just means it doesn't have any tropical characteristics much anymore. It is more... Uh, most more closely aligned with a, a regular low pressure center. Although when you look at that, it still looks pretty tropical, but it's lost its eye and all those definitions. What's interesting about powerful storms like Aaron is that they leave a trail behind. So this is the sea surface temperature and the seven day change in that temperature. So Aaron basically went like this and curved back like this. So <laughs> bad drawing, but it does uh, extract heat from the ocean surface. So it leaves a trail behind uh, where the temperatures are slightly below or have changed over the seven-day period. But they are also slightly below. That was the next slide. So you can see that's not as extensive, but right at the core, the anomaly of what you would normally expect here is is can, you can clearly see where it was at its most intense. Uh, much of the Gulf is still very, very much above normal, as is much of the Atlantic, too. The, the main development region is out here. And again, you have some patches of cool, some patches of warm, but it needs to be stressed that uh, warm just means possibly more energetic. Everything out here is warm enough for a tropical storm or a hurricane this time of year. So we've gone through these names, and if one were to develop here soon, it would be called uh, uh, Fernand. And um, that's possible. And we'll take a look at the forecast here. So there are two areas that uh, are being watched for the next seven days. This area right here, uh, which has a 70% uh, chance or greater of some sort of tropical cyclone developing, and it's almost forecast from its birth to move due north. And then out here um, to the east of the Leeward Islands, this is a 40 to 60% chance of some development out in that part of the Atlantic. Uh, if we take a look at the EFS tropical storm probabilities, this is valid late Sunday. And um, you're seeing about a 30 to 40 percent chance of some sort of tropical storm in that same area that the Hurricane Center outlined and very weak chances here. And I looked even a, a more distance out on this particular chart and I just didn't see anything very exciting out here at all. But, you know, it could. It's a pretty long range forecast. But so far, you know, it's been nailing these tropical storms and hurricanes of fairly well. I want to show you this too. This is issued twice a week. This is just the 500 millibar wind flow. And a lot of times this is used as the quote unquote steering currents. And looking at the mean flow, basically this starts on Sunday and goes for seven days forward. So all the next week starting on Sunday. And when you see this, this blue and purple shading here, that means that there, it means that the, the, the flow is dipping down to the south like this in a way that's slightly uh, 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 away from what is normal. So these there's a dip here. What does that mean? Well, there's two things to this. Number one, this is supporting a fairly large push of cool air, and we'll detail that here in a minute. But it also acts as a hurricane block too. So anything coming at us from this direction is gonna get quickly caught up in this flow and move away. That's why that that very high risk I just showed you is going to take anything and move it almost due north immediately. So that's that's a piece of good news. Now, keep in mind that the peak of the hurricane season is a month away, roughly, a little less. Uh, so we still got lots of room for hurricane development and possible landfall. Uh, so we'll just keep an eye on that. The severe weather outlooks are actually pretty tame. We have some uh, uh, activity along a front here. That covers uh, this strip here. This is a level one. This is a marginal risk of severe weather, so not a real widespread chance. And some monsoon activity, showers and thunderstorms in parts of Arizona, leading to that risk right there. I'm skipping ahead to Sunday uh, because there is no level one or greater activity forecast for Saturday. So some good news there. Uh, so this is Sunday's outlook. We're looking at Denver and much of eastern Colorado is a Again, just kind of a marginal risk of some severe storms forming in that area on Sunday. And as as I always say, you know, there's room to upgrade these. Uh, this is issued as of Friday afternoon. I do want to take a look, though, at the supercell composite here. 
And this is interesting because uh, the probabilities are going up a little bit in the central plains, but this is a week-long forecast. Uh, this is going from the 29th through the 4th, so it goes through uh, Labor Day um, weekend and beyond. So this is interesting, a little uptick in the activity expected there. And I usually don't show the next week. This is week three, but I thought it was kind of important just because it looks pretty important, right? So but the probabilities are going up in almost the exact same area from the 5th, so just continuing from that last graph, through the 11th of September. Again, that's such a stretch. That's out there, but it does show kind of an interesting uptick. And what that tells me here is that we uh, will be getting a little bit of a flow out of the southwest aloft here that's going to allow this uh, typical, what would normally be a springtime kind of pattern, shifted north just a little bit maybe. Uh, so it's kind of interesting. If that holds true, we may have, even though we're in a lull in severe weather right now, we may see an uptick, especially in the first uh, week or two of September. On the heavy rain side of things, there is a flood watch in effect for this area, including Columbus, South Carolina, Augusta, and all the way down almost to Jacksonville, Florida, Savannah, and Charleston, including that. That is not anything to do with Aaron. That is just a stalled front, basically, and showers and thunderstorms that are congregating around it. Not surprisingly, the heavy rain hazard for the rest of today and, and this is a slight risk right here, this yellow. I usually only show days when there's a slight risk uh, even in play. Uh, so that is a, um, you know, at least a 15% chance of any rainfall exceeding flash flood guidance within 25 miles of a point. So uh, that uh, flood watch is perfectly placed for that risk. If we go ahead to Saturday, basically the same area, but also a little bit uh, more now showing up in New Mexico, parts of Colorado. That's part of a trend I want to show you now. We'll go ahead to Sunday, and this starts to expand and move out into the plains a little bit. And even more so on Monday, we see a slight risk that extends through the heart of Oklahoma, back through parts of Texas, all the way up to Denver. Let's show you some precipitation forecasts. This is for the next five days. Now, keep in mind... Even though this is the next five days, you certainly saw evidence this is really going to happen toward the latter part of these five days. So this rainfall here is probably going to start really setting in in earnest uh, beginning on Sunday and going into Monday early next week. Whereas this stuff here in Georgia is go ongoing now. You'll notice much of the heavier rain is off coast. So, uh, But much of the rest of the country is not really seeing much of a significant rain threat. A little bit of rain along a front in New England and that's it. Let's zoom in on that um, activity over Kansas. Now, again, this is the next seven days worth of accumulated precipitation, but this is heavily weighed beginning on Sunday and going through uh, the early part of next week. But we see some five-inch totals showing up in parts of northern Oklahoma. Uh, I live in Springfield here. we got a three-inch total here, and it's been kind of dry. There are patchy drought areas here, by the way. And so we could use some rain, especially if this were to extend this way. And this is a pattern I talked about last time I put a video out. We sometimes get these rain areas when fronts stall like this, and then we get upper-level disturbances passing over the top of that front, and we usually can squeeze out some pretty good fall rains in that type of pattern. That's exactly what's setting up. Here's the National Visible Satellite Loop. You can see Aaron departing here. You can also see the effects of this stall front with clouds and thunderstorms forming coastal areas of uh, Texas, Louisiana, and back into that flood watch area. Here's another front right here, and then this is a, a obvious swirl in the clouds right here. Let's take a look at that. In the upper levels of the atmosphere, we have the hot dome is shifted to the west. Uh, this is a trough of low pressure helping to support one front. Here's a really strong uh, trough of low pressure uh, aloft. This is 500 millibars that's helping to support the movement of this front here. And then there's a surface low underneath this particular feature, and we'll talk about that here more in a minute. Uh, here's the visible satellite loop uh, kind of highlighting that northern area there. You can see a definite circulation going on. Uh, from Canada across uh, North Dakota. You can see thunderstorms firing along that boundary. Um, but as you saw, they're not really broadly expected to be uh, very severe. Uh, let's take a look at the surface map. So we have that stalled off front in southern Georgia, Mississippi, and then we have this cool cold front that's going to bring a pretty big change. You'll see over the next week or so, uh, a large chunk of the northern and northeastern U.S. will be abnormally cool for this time of year. Uh, so that uh, is an interesting feature. Let's take a look at uh, the station model. I show these once in a while just to show you 
uh, and how you read these is you just pick a, a location. And so here's a location right here. So the circle is the actual station plot. Uh, and then the temperature is in the upper left-hand corner. The dew points in the lower left-hand corner. So in Illinois, you're looking at dew points in the 60s in northern Illinois and temperatures in the low 80s. Now you go behind this front. It's interesting. You see temperatures in about the same location, 81, 79. It's the dew points that drop like a rock this time of year. So you're seeing very, very dry air, uh, continental air here with a dew point of only 43 contrasted with something about 10 degrees higher in Illinois. So that helps to define a front, as do wind boundaries. Uh, you can kind of see right here where that front is, especially behind the front where winds are picking up out of the westerly, northwesterly direction up there. And in fact, winds might be um, to the point where they need to be advised up here uh, in parts of North Dakota and a small chunk of Minnesota and a little bit of Montana too, a wind advisory in effect there. And while we're on the topic of advisories on the heat side of things, it's all on the West Coast now. So things are really cooling down everywhere else but here. But heat advisories where you see uh, that uh, orange kind of color and extreme heat warnings, including Los Angeles and interior parts of Washington, temperatures uh, at uh, actually that's not noon mountain time that's about three o'clock mountain time i'm sorry for the correction there but uh, phoenix you know right around 110 degrees but it extends over into southern parts of uh, california interior valley areas are at 100 and you see some patchy heat here uh, um, and also some coastal cooling with temperatures in uh, northern california only in the low 60s what is the temperature trend over the next couple of days? Let's take a look. So this is the forecast for Saturday. Again, if you're new to these maps, the colors are indicating departures from normal. So where you see greens and blues, that means it's slightly below normal. Where you see these intense reds, that's hotter than it should be this time of year, according to the normals anyway. So South Texas, much of the northern plains, part of the southeast, that's cloud cover induced mostly, are seeing a, a departure. And then the actual forecast for the cities are the numbers. Uh, so uh, Chicago 83 as an example and Bismarck uh, uh, North Dakota only at 72 and that's for tomorrow Saturday for us uh, Monday look how much this uh, below normal area expands eastward and southward the high will only be 78 degrees where I live here in Springfield that's a pleasant change Dodge will barely get to 70 degrees as will many of these stations in the northern plains stopping just short in the upper 60s so pretty significant still hot uh, in parts of interior Washington, not really cooling down much um, in the Phoenix area. You'll note that um, even though those are hot temperatures, the realistic look at it is that this is not that far away from what people in that area expect this time of year. We're not seeing a large anomaly. Now, this is a pretty large anomaly. Even if we go into Wednesday, we still see it. Now, this is the combined effects of the cool air mass settling in from the northwest and that rain area I showed you. Remember that? So that's actually keeping temperatures very, very cool in, in uh, parts of Kansas and Oklahoma for Wednesday. A couple more extended forecasts and we'll be uh, done here. I want to take a quick look at the 6 to 10 day temperature forecast. Again, a fairly high confidence level in this dark blue. That reading is going to be below normal for the entire period of Thursday through Monday and still pretty hot in the uh, northwestern U.S. as indicated there. Precipitation, uh, not unexpectedly, that area I showed you that was advancing out into the, into the central plains is showing up as a high confidence, even higher confidence of some heavier rains in parts of uh, Idaho and Oregon for that Thursday through Monday time frame. And finally, uh, I think it was yesterday that this was officially uh, put out, the temperature outlook for the entire lower 48 here from the Climate Center. And uh, it's showing a fairly high confidence of it being hotter than normal in Utah and parts of the high desert desert there in Colorado and in parts of New England and on the precipitation side of things fairly high confidence and not real high but a little high in a strip there from Georgia through the Carolinas and northern Florida of slightly above normal uh, wetness in September maybe also parts of Washington closer to the ocean and pretty dry where the hot temperatures are forecast about the same bullseye there through parts of Utah. Thanks for watching this edition of Weather to Watch. It comes out every other day or as the weather necessitates. Please remember to share this with your friends, subscribe to the channel, or at the very least, like what you just watched. Thanks.